praise the Lord. I'm delighted to be with you again this evening. We've been together for the last two weeks discussing the topic, the principle of repetition and persistence in prayer. Amen. So last week, uh, we ended when we are looking at uh, repetition in the garden when our Lord was faced with a cross. Amen. And we saw that he submitted to the will of God. That's the reason we are saved today. So let's pray together as we wind up on this topic in this broadcast this evening. Father, we want to bless your name for the good time we've had together for the last two weeks. Lord, I ask that as we conclude this topic today, many will go out with something that they've learned and they'll practice it and they'll grow closer to you and they'll be better at seeking you and submitting to your will. Come and be with us as we learn this evening. We invite your presence to abide with us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So last week we saw that when we persist in prayers and wait upon God, sometimes even the answers we get may be a little uncomfortable. As for the case of our Lord Jesus Christ, he had to face the cross. It was difficult. It was gruesome. And yet he submitted to the will of God. So even us in today's world, there are cases where we will pray and ask God. And then even the answers we get may not look pleasant at that time. They may look like they're against us. And yet it's what we get. I'll give you my testimony. My mom went to be with the Lord in November 2018 after an attack of stroke. She had got the first one in 2016 and she came out of it. This was the second one. My mother had hypertension for about 25 years. She was on treatment. So the last few years were difficult for her. So when my mother got the last stroke in 2018, and went into a coma. We, we prayed. Of course, we'd been praying for mommy for many years. I already said she was hypertensive for 25 years. So this time round, we said, Lord, we've been praying for mama for a long time. Why don't you deliver her once and for all? Why don't you set her free? So my mom, instead of getting better, she was getting worse. And my sisters had said, we need her to settle first. Then he transfer her to Kampala. But that time <laughs> was not coming. So one day, my sister, who was with her at the hospital, called and said, you guys need to come see mom. She's not getting any better. You may never take her to Kampala. Better come here and, and see mommy because the situation is bad. So... All my siblings who are in Kampala ran to Lira to see mommy. But for me, I stayed. Why? Because I wanted to find out from the Lord what his will was for mama. Was she going to come out? Was she going home? What was it I needed to know? So I told my husband, can we invite some of our friends and we have a prayer meeting. And the topic is mommy. He said, fine. So we met Pastor John, myself, and three other friends. And as we were praying and asking God to heal mommy, a word came through my husband. <laughs> and one of those friends said, Pastor John, you have a word. God has put it in you. Please speak it. And my husband was just weeping. And then I'm thinking, now what is it? Let him tell us if there is a word. So eventually he speaks and he said, this is what the Lord told me. He's going to take mommy home. So for me, it was a very 
unpleasant answer to prayer at that time. I remember weeping for one week. My mother died the following week, but I had already had the bigger portion of crying. And mommy went to be with the Lord. A similar thing happened with my father. Daddy went home 14 months after mommy had gone. That was in January last year, 2020. And my father had also been in and out of hospital for long. And he was staying with, with my family. So the day daddy went home to be with the Lord, my husband was with him in the hospital together with my, one of my elder sisters and my young brother. I stayed home so I could prepare things to take to the hospital in the morning. And daddy got so bad. Every system was failing. And he was on life support, was put on life support that evening. And my husband said, he stood by his bedside and he said, Lord, you are a healer. You change not. Why don't you just heal Papa? He's in a lot of pain. He may be elderly, but we need him here for advice, for guidance. We still need him. He's the only parent we have left. And the Lord answered my husband and said, but he has asked me for rest, and I have already granted it to him. Now, shortly after God told my husband that, my father went home to be with the Lord. And I felt bad. I was saying, Lord, this was the only parent I had left. Why didn't you heal daddy? You heal many. Every day you're healing people. What about mine? And the Lord kept quiet. But shortly after that, COVID-19 hit Uganda. And by March, we were in lockdown. So these days, when I look back, I just tell the Lord, Lord, you did the best thing for my parents. It's good you took them home. My mother was, not, was, was blind by the time she died because she lost her sight after two surgeries that went bad. The, the eye pressure was too much and the eyes gave way. And then because of the stroke, mommy could not talk. Now you tell me, in this situation of COVID, where they're saying, don't touch, social distance, don't do this, don't do the other. How was my mother going to live? Because she depended on touch and feel. So, sometimes when answers come, they seem so unpleasant. But God knows what is best for us. He's Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. It sees ahead. For us, we only know what we can see. And then we only know what he reveals in the spirit. That is what we can partake of. But everything else is a secret to us. So it's important to submit to the will of God. I have learned to submit to his will. It is the very best. Amen? Because he is God. So Jesus Christ submitted to the will of God. And it was, it was not good for him. It was painful going, I mean, the cross. None of us can stand it. But it was the best for us. That's the reason we are saved today. So even as we persist in prayer and seeking God, let us always remember to submit to the will of God. To first of all get to know what is the Lord saying about this circumstance, about this situation. And then we submit, it is the best thing to do. Amen? So we are still discussing the principle of repetition in prayer. And I want us to look at another classical example in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 13. We are going to look at five verses, 14 to 19. Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. Then Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it. And Elisha put his hands on the king's hands and said, Open the east window. And he opened it. And Elisha said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Afek. 
until you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrows. So he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck the ground three times and stopped. <laughs> Verse 19. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. Are you seeing? Repetition is what we are talking about here. The king struck the ground once, twice, thrice, and he stopped. And Elisha said, my friend, you should have done it several times, five times, six times. Then you would have complete victory. Now you've only done it three times. So I would like to say to you, before you give up on praying and say, ah, I'm tired. You do not know. Sometimes, many times, you do not have the spiritual eyes to see what you're dealing with. Some bondages, for example, will take much prayer. You strike once and it weakens. You do it the second time, it weakens further. The third time, it's getting weaker. Now, if you stop, it is weak, yes, but it is still there. So you need to strike many times. So repeat it five times, six times, seven times or more until the bondage is shattered. And then you get your complete victory. You see this painful example of this king. Elisha told him you'll only have victory three times because you did not strike many times. Amen? So repeat. Repeat it. Hit the target. Bombard it until it is broken. Until it is shattered. Until it is destroyed. Until it is no more and cannot rise up again to bother you. Instead of complaining and saying, I ah, prayed, 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 and this bondage is not breaking. You have not understood certain things. You must understand the principle of repetition. Let me give you this example. Something that we all know. If you go to the doctor and they say you have an infection. And you're given antibiotics and he says, take two tablets three times a day for five days. We all don't like to take medicine. I know that. I am one of those. And then for you, you decide, I will take one tablet once a day for three days. I believe it will also work. Will it work? You will not get well. As a matter of fact, you might develop a resistance to the antibiotics because you're taking an underdose. You see? So even in the natural, we have to repeat certain things. Do it many times, more times. So how much more should we repeat prayers? Even the frequency. You, we, we see Daniel. Daniel was praying three times a day. And then for you, you pray once a day and you think, eh, eh, it is too much. Who tells you? Amen? So God has given us everything to enable us to get victory. But failure to persist, coupled with laziness, and a lousy attitude. Complaining, grumbling, comparing yourself with others as if in this life you are in a competition. No. Brethren, we do not compete. Each one of us is unique. And has been put here for a special assignment. So don't look at me and you want to be like me. Do you know my assignment? Do you know why God put me here? You do not. So why do you want to be like Irene? Be you and do what God has put you here to do. So we are not in a competition. We are here to find out our purpose, to persist in it, to fulfill it, so that we can glorify God. So have the right attitude, and then you will not be frustrated. And then you will not compare yourself to your sister or brother. And then you will not give up on the things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So the last example as you wind up is the prophet Elijah at Mount Carmel. We are going to go there in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. Just move backwards from where you have been a little and you will be there. And I'm going to read 1 Kings 18 from verse 41. 
And this is what the scripture says. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. He was not just putting his face between his knees. He was actually praying. Okay? That is a prayer posture of Elijah, the prophet. He was praying. Because he had declared that there would be rain. So now he had to open the heavens, which he had closed for three and a half years. So he put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. And then it came to pass the seventh time, the seventh time, not the third, not the fifth, not the sixth, but the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Verse 45. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Hallelujah. I love this scripture. Okay. So Elijah, he prayed for rain. Up to seven times. And his servant went to check seven times. Hallelujah. So the seventh time is when he saw a small one. A small one like the hand of a man. That was what was seen. That is what, what man manifested in the physical. But Elijah saw it with the eyes of the spirit. And it was abundance of rain with storm. He even warned Ahab, the king, before the rains came to hurry to safety. A servant of Elijah also repeated the same act of going to check for the rain, for the sign, up to seven times. He obeyed his master all those seven times, checking for the sign. What do we see here? We see persistence. We see repetition, determination, Faith, trust in the Lord, and maturity in the Lord. Hallelujah. We are not seeing any grumbling, complaining, giving up, you know, a lousy attitude. No. Amen. We have to mature in the things of God and walk with God. Let's learn from this great servant of the Lord. Elijah was anointed, and yet he still had to pray persisted, waited on God, repeated it seven times, hallelujah. He depended on God alone and knew that with God all things are possible. So why do some of you depend on men and women of God? As if you do not have direct, direct access to God? Hmm? So quit running around, settle down. Learn to wait upon the Lord. Get rid of sin in your life. It's the only thing that you can have to work against you. Sin. Imbibe the word of God. Eat it, read it, meditate on it, and seek him even for bigger things. As you learn to pray, you develop spiritual ears and eyes so you can them in the spirit. Good or bad, either way, you will know what to do. Are they bad? You will pray and stop them from manifesting. Are they good? You will pray them to manifest in the physical and worship God and give him thanks. So either way, it is important to have spiritual sight. Amen? 
quit running around and depending on men. Depend on God alone. Why? Because you are your best prophet. In this ministry, we believe that you are the best person to pray for you. You are the one who knows what you're going through. You are the one who understands the pains and the hearts that you feel in there. You're the one who understands how bad the situation is. So you are your best prophet. You are your best intercessor. So in our ministry that the Lord has given us, we teach you to do it yourself. We teach you to pray. We teach you to fast. We teach you to wait upon God. We teach you to be holy. We teach you to have a good attitude as you wait upon the Lord. Why are you your best prophet? The ministry of prophecy, the words that the prophets will give you, are only supposed to confirm and complement what you yourself has already got in the spirit. It is dangerous for you to go by their words alone when you have no witness, you have no confirmation, you've not seen it. It's like someone comes, and, 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 and proposes to you in marriage. Will you just say yes when you've not heard from the Lord? When my husband came to propose, I told him, my friend, I know you from church, and that is how far it goes. But I need time to confirm if you are the one. Then he said, okay, how much time do you think you'll give me? I said, I cannot tell you. Because it depends on when God answers me. That's when I can give you an answer. That's the way it works. So you cannot go by the words of this prophet. When you yourself, you are not praying, you do not know what God is saying, and you're just going by their leading. No wonder many are misled. They are only supposed to confirm what the Lord has already somehow given you. Actually, they tell you a glimpse of what they see. But you have the full picture. Where did you get it? In the closet of prayer. As you tarried before the Lord. As you persisted in prayer. And you grew spiritual eyes. And you grew spiritual ears. And you can perceive in the spirit. And God leads you to scriptures to confirm what he's saying. So when this man says blah, 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 blah about you. You know, you're not amazed. You just say, yes, Lord, you're confirming. Hallelujah. So when you are persistent in prayer, you are completely and totally plugged into the power grid of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And in that way, you are dependent on God. Because we are told in John 15, abide in me and I in you. For apart from me, you can do nothing. All those men that you are depending on, the women you are depending on, they too the, 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 the right ones are depending on God. So why do you depend on someone to depend on God for you? Do you see that statement? It even sounds funny. You have direct access to God because of the cross, because of the gift of Christ, the price that Jesus paid. So why are you making people do it for you? And they take advantage of you. Our Heavenly Father is always ready to answer us when we call him. He is not deaf that he cannot hear. He's not blind that he cannot see. He is God. He made the eyes. He made us in totality. So he understands and he knows it all. So let us seek God and persist in his presence. He may either answer us instantly or it will take some persistence or some repetition and tarrying in his presence. Either way, God answers prayers. Amen? Answers may be pleasant at the time or not, but if it is in the will of God, it is best because he knows the end from the beginning. He knows your tomorrow. He knows what next year will be. He knows how it will all end with this COVID-19. So why don't you key in? Connect with him. And refuse to be taken away from that place. Hallelujah. So I would like to encourage you. To make up your mind. And have the determination of Hannah. 
that the, the determination of the persistent widow in Luke 18 that we shared about. The determination of Elijah, the prophet, that prayed and sent the servants to watch for the rain up to seven times until it came through. Let us persist in him. Let us wait upon him. There are so many benefits that we looked at, at, at when, we, when, when we, we tarry in his presence. When we refuse to be taken away from there. When we refuse to be distracted. When we refuse to give up. When we refuse to be lazy. When we refuse to have a lousy attitude. But remain there thankful and waiting on him. Knowing that those who trust in the Lord cannot be disappointed. Hallelujah. God cannot disappoint you. God cannot fail you. God cannot lie to you. Men are liars. But the Lord is truth. Hallelujah. So, pick yourself up and start to wait upon the Lord again. He is a good God. He is a faithful father. And he will never disappoint you. He will never fail you. He understands you more than anyone else. He wants to be your friend. He wants to partner with you. He wants to transform you. He wants to change your situation. He wants to make you fulfill the purpose for which he put you here. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we pray together as we end? Our God and our Father, we worship you because you're a good God. You are a faithful Father. You never fail. You never disappoint. You are never late. You're always on time. Your ears are not blocked. Your eyes are not blind that you cannot see what we are going through. Oh God, we lift up your holy name. And we pray, oh God, that this time, Lord, for everyone that is watching, for everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice, Lord, even for me, that you draw us to you. And may, may, may we be connected to the Holy Ghost power grid. Keep us in you. Keep us waiting upon you. I pray for the grace to pray. I pray for the grace to fast. I pray for the grace to set ourselves apart and seek you, O oh God. You said when we seek you with all of our hearts, we will find you. And you're looking for a man, a woman, a child, a youth that is ready to say, I am not giving up. I am not throwing in the towel. I will wait upon this God. I will seek him because he never fails. He's Alpha and Omega. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God of Elijah who answered him by fire. The God of Daniel, he never fails. The God of Esther, he never fails. Hallelujah. Father, I pray, let them be lifted up from the valley of slumber. From the valley of discouragement. From the valley of disappointment. Lift them up by your spirit. And set them upon a rock. Where they will depend on the rock of ages. The king of kings. And the lord of lords. The almighty father. Where they cannot give up. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost I pray. That you will strengthen each and every one of them. Strengthen them oh God. Fill them with the anointing. Fill them with your presence. Fill them with your power. And let your glory rest upon them. I call upon the blood of Jesus to cover them. To cover their families in these perilous times. Lord, that they shall be safe. They shall be protected in the name of Jesus. We honor you and worship you. And for that one who doesn't know the Lord. And is asking, how do I know this God? Father, I pray, touch their lives. That they will confess you as Lord and as Savior. Just open your, your mouth and say, Lord, I accept you. I invite you to come and be my Lord and my Savior. Come and be my King. Redeem my soul. And let me fulfill the purpose for which you blessed me here. Oh, hallelujah. We want to bless you, Lord. We honor you. We give thanks to your name. You are a faithful God. You will never fail. Hallelujah. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.